This week, lifeguards faced the most serious incident of the season. A man is dragged from the surf. No pulse, no breath, no life. One p.m. midweek on Bondi Beach. A small crowd, gentle surf, perfect conditions. So good. Beautiful day, huh? Oh, sensational. It's not the time when you'd expect things to go wrong. Five off-duty lifeguards happen to be taking part in a photo shoot following media interest in Bondi Rescue. Amongst them is Hoppo, the boss, and Corey, one of the most experienced lifeguards on the beach. Halfway through the shoot, a dramatic event unfolds right beside them. A man's found floating, lifeless in the surf. It's here, we've got to get off the beach. Get off the beach. His name is Takahiro Ono, an English language student from Tokyo. No one knows what's happened to him or how long he's been in the water. Right, right, mate, right, mate, no. Someone go and get on the uh, radio. There's a radio on my bike and call for the doof here. Yeah. Check pulse. Hoppo can't detect a pulse. Bagging, come on. He's not breathing. Bagging, come on, come on. Bagging. Tucker is clinically dead. You grab the nuns? The boys must get his heart beating again and air into his lungs. It's a male, about 20 years old. Uh, they got him on the bag now. I'll get back to him more. Everyone? I can't really feel that. Danny arrives with a defibrillator as Corey starts CPR. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tucker still has no pulse. Stand clear. Stand clear. Watch out. Everyone stand clear. 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 Check pulse. Give CPR. Check pulse. There's no pulse. Give CPR. I can't get one. Start CPR. The deep fib doesn't work on Tucker first time. The machine needs time to recharge. Corey continues CPR. 11, 12. Your ambulance has been called. Paramedics are on the way. Just if you need anything else, give us the L. Yeah, copy that, Chapo. 12, 13, 14, 15. It's four minutes since lifeguards got to Tucker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The machine needs time to establish whether he has any heart rhythm. Stand clear. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. Tucker's had two shocks. He's in spasm. Patients rarely survive if they need more than three shocks. Tucker's been clinically dead for at least four and a half minutes. He has one chance left. I've lost stand it. clear. Stand clear, stand clear, stand clear. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. The third shock has finally had an effect. Do not touch patient. Analyzing rhythm. Um, I won't shock again. Breathe, Still staying here. Stay clear. Stay clear. Analyzing rhythm. Breathing, yeah. It's all right, mate. It's all right. There's no pulse. Give CPR. He's got a fine pulse. He's breathing, mate. It's getting stronger. Take a good pulse. Take a good pulse here. He's been in the water and you swallowed a lot of water, okay? Stay. Just relax, mate. Just relax. We're looking after you, okay? Understand? He's got a strong heartbeat now, strong heart. Just, just keep your head there, mate. It's okay. Just giving you some oxygen. It's okay, right, it's mate. okay. It's all right, buddy. It's okay, mate. Just relax. Just take it easy. Yeah. Take it. Uh, 
Good work, boys. All of us, eh? Good work. Try deep breaths, mate. Okay. As they wait for an ambulance, lifeguards try and piece together the events that almost killed Tucker. What, what happened to him? I don't know. I, I, I love to swim in the water. And he just got kind of floating or what? Yeah. No one knows how long Tucker was clinically dead in the water. But for five minutes, the lifeguards kept him alive on the sand. Despite the trauma of a major medical emergency, Tucker knows who and where he is. What's your name? Takahiro. Takahiro, is it? Yeah. I know where you are. Tucker? Yeah. Where are you? Where? Bondi. He said Bondi. A shot of Maxillon will help stabilise Tucker. Lifeguards and paramedics brace him on a spinal board. They're concerned Tucker may also be suffering a spinal injury. Perhaps he was violently knocked out in the surf. Was it, was it immersion related or? You think so? He was found at the edge Can of the water. Can you feel me clutching your elbow? So you pulled him out of the water. Yeah. Have you used it on an arrest before? Oh, we used to. We had 12 last year. Did you? Yeah. Oh, they're unreal, these things. Unbelievable. Oh, it's it's got to have someone behind it, mate. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you blokes did all right. Tucker's alive, but the drama's far from over. How did he end up floating lifeless in the water? Has he damaged his spine? Will he suffer any brain damage from lack of oxygen? You happy to go on your own or do you want to... See you later. Thanks, well mate. done, you Thanks. saved his life. You're yeah. great, you blokes. Thanks, Tucker's not out of danger yet. <laughs> Tucker's being rushed to hospital after lifeguards brought him back from death. Hoppo's conducted scores of resuscitations, but Tucker's ranks as one of the most dramatic. Three shocks in a fair bit, eh? Three shocks in a fair bit. Pretty much if that third shock didn't work, it would have been starting to get out to that time where we're really going to start pushing and getting back. It came back really strong real quick, the pulse, and usually that's a good sign. A dead look is a real weird sort of look. You know they're basically dead when you see them. And to actually know when you feel you can't feel a pulse, watch the defib shock them, and then actually get them back breathing and with a pulse, it's like an it's an amazing feeling that you probably can't really describe in words, that how you really feel. And I know the guys after we do it, we have a debrief, and the buzz around that you know you've you've just revived somebody is absolutely amazing. Younger lifeguards Nathan and Whippet are still coming to grips with what happened. But well, how lucky was it that we were doing that? Yeah. Photo shoot thing yeah. And we'll, like, to have Hoppo down there and... Everyone was on it straight away. It's good. Yeah, five of us in the first... First five seconds, it was good. Hoppo and Corey were sick, but... Yeah. How on would I lie? It was good. He was talking to me, though, when you got him on the bike on that, eh? Mm-hmm. That's unreal, eh? That's great. Seeing the shocks, when, they, when it shocks them and they do that move, that's the first time I've seen it. Well, that's the first time I've seen a big yeah. picture of that. After two shocks, he got a pulse again, I think, and then it went again, so they... And the third one, and that snapped him back. Kind of quick. What did he say when he come to? I think he said sorry, eh? As the boys debrief, Tucker arrives at St Vincent's Emergency. Ladies and gentlemen, have you heard the story? Hello. This is Tucker. Tucker Horro. Tucker Horro is a 24-year-old male who was surfing at the beach. He was found at the edge of the, at, of the water. Uh, the lifeguards brought him back onto the beach. They put the monitor on him because he was unconscious. Um, they noticed that it was a VF. Um, they shocked him three times. Uh, GCS eventually came around once we arrived. He's complaining of pain to his right shoulder and left chest. He speaks Japanese, learning English here in Australia. So maybe some of the questions you have to re-ask. But what happened to Tucker? Swedish tourist Isabella was the first to find him lying in just a foot or two of water. Yeah, and I just saw a guy who was like, I thought he was joking, he was just swimming, swinging around because he was like, mm -hmm. but then he was like turning around and I saw his eyes, he was like yeah. wide open. It was, then I thought, shit, so I was like, are you okay? And I pulled him up 
he didn't answer, so and his head was. He did, he did a good job. Good job. But he was dead. He was, yeah, he was dead. He was dead. He was dead. Oh, shit. <laughs> so they they did shock three times. We had to shock him three times to get the heart going again. Uh, good. Good job. Thank you. Tucker's vital signs are healthy. Now emergency doctors need to find out what caused his heart to stop beating. Okay, so you're going to feel a sharp scratch in a minute, okay? You remember what happened in the surgery? Yeah. Okay, so you can feel that. But you remember being dumped by a wave? Okay, mate, sharp scratch. Oh, no. No, okay. Pressure. There's still concern about Tucker's neck and spine. Okay. Is it sore here? Sore in your neck anywhere? So at the moment we're treating him with spinal precautions in case he was uh, dumped and he's had a spinal injury. but also we're treating him as though he may have had a primary problem with his heart. His heart may have gone into a funny rhythm, causing him to drown or nearly drown. So we're not really sure which came first at the moment, so we're just trying to work that out at the end at this stage. Tucker will soon learn he's got a long-term medical problem to deal with. The passing of a Bondi summer is marked by a series of noteworthy days. Christmas, New Year's, and on January 26, there's Australia Day. Improvise. Yeah. Just putting together our megaphone holder so we can um, yell at people that are doing the wrong thing. Testing, testing. Hello, happy Australia Day. Here we go, a good response. The flag raising ceremony at the local council is always conducted by a leading citizen. This year, Hoppo does the honours in full uniform, including the formal black thongs. Oh, I love the lifeguards. They're great. They're all so fit. Um, I try and keep up with them when I'm running on the beach, but not a hope. <laughs> the first fleet arrived in Sydney on January 26, 1788. Let us rejoice, for we are young and free. With golden soil and wealth at all, our home is good by sea. Our it's a day when people debate what it means to be Australian. Our beauty rich and rare. This man wants a new flag and a new national anthem to go with it. Sky, sea, beach, bush. OK? Sky, sea, beach, bush. Three times, OK? And this way, when you look at it, you see the sky, the sea, the beach and the bush. Yeah. And there's a bit of the dreaming track. Personally, I've got my own design that I'd, I'd like to see. And that, that would be the current flag that we got, minus the Union Jack, with an Aboriginal flag in the Union Jack. So it covers both ends of the field. So we've got a 70,000 year tradition of Aboriginals in this country. So um, I think they should be represented got the uh, boomerang and here's a bit of the dreaming track. It, the English haven't really backed us up too much, you know. We were sent here as prisoners and we've turned out to be, you know, the greatest nation on this planet. <laughs> Thanks for that, Neville Rand. <laughs> <laughs> At the north end of Bondi, another new tradition is gathering support. It's the second year of Blow Up Bondi. Who knows what it all means, but it looks like fun, with a strong Aussie flavour. Yeah, guys, just to let you know, there's a big group of um, backpackers going out to the point to paddle in on their lilos. Just keep an eye on them, because a couple of them are uh, pissed. But I've had a word to them, so I'm to be careful. Over. Right out, right North Cliff. <laughs> The aim is to head for shore. At the moment, they're making good progress towards New Zealand. 
Well, I've done a couple of board rescues, but never have I rescued someone on a floating kangaroo. The weather's closing in and things are going pear-shaped. On the beach, lifeguards are being entertained by a choir supposedly from a Siberian tractor factory. But the Koreans are all mixed up. It's not Happy Korea Day. <laughs> Meanwhile, the blow-up Bondi flotilla is making even better progress in the wrong direction. <laughs> Yates is going to the rescue. Fortunately, everyone's made it to shore safely, even the marsupials. Australia Day hasn't been fun for one man. thaney has been called to help Chilean tourist Bruno. He's in a lot of pain with a dislocated knee. Does it hurt? What? Does your leg hurt? Thaney can't understand a word he's saying. Just come over here, just to... Chilean tourist Bruno's dislocated his knee, but lifeguard Thaney can't understand a word he's saying. One guy central to Thaney. Uh, Yatesy's uh, heading in your direction too, to back you up and over. Enter Yatesy, stage left. Doubles English? Uh, oui. Espanol? Espanol? Si. Tu problema? Tu problema? Si. Mucho dolor o no? Si. Si. Move there. While Bruno suffers on the grass, a young surfer needs help in the tower. Come on, come on, come on. Being multilingual isn't part of the Bondi lifeguard job description. Yatesy and H have studied languages for other reasons. I was fortunate to meet a lot of lovely French women. I was fortunate to meet and have a little bit of a um, an experience, but uh, that didn't happen. But uh, c'est la vie, c'est l'amour, c'est la guerre. I actually met a chick in Colombia, and I lived with her for for four months and just. There was no English, I didn't speak English for four months, so um, that's how I learnt Spanish, yeah, just picking it up at school. Sebastian's foot isn't too bad, but he needs directions to the nearest medical clinic. Bondi Road, it's la première route. And Pont to arrive, la troisième feu de rouge, c'est une petite rue à droite. Read that. OK. OK, I'm OK. Cigarillo especial. What's that, mate? Special cigarette. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, pretty fortunate that I could get through to him, actually, because otherwise he, we, he, we'd probably still be stuck here. <laughs> OK. One, two, three. Voy a trabajo en la playa, chao. So it's au revoir for Sebastian. Au revoir, eh? Bon chance. Merci beaucoup. OK, mate, do rien. And adios to Bruno, who's off the hospital. <laughs> Japanese language student Takahiro Ono is being visited by a fellow student and his English teacher. Hey, Takahiro. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's so Japanese. Sorry. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> did, did you try to catch a wave? So maybe you got dumped by the wave. You got sand everywhere, Taka. Hmm? Sand in your ears, sand in your hair, <laughs> sand everywhere. 
Bondi was our last stop. We only had half an hour to have lunch and have a swim. So um, we raced into the water to have our swim and we were just about ready to leave when um, whatever happened to Tucker happened. <laughs> Tests reveal Tucker probably hasn't damaged his spine. However, doctors can't yet determine whether he drowned or may have suffered a heart problem in the water. I didn't realise it was him at first, actually. Um, and then when I did, I just couldn't comprehend what had happened. So I'm assuming that um, he was dumped. It will be a long wait before Tucker and his friends find out what happened. Being a lifeguard demands peak fitness. I love my training. It's a passion. It's, as they say, there's a flame burning inside you, and when that flame's burning, it's not going to go out for sure. What they don't realise is they're getting themselves fit, and I'm preparing them for when you know the busy days of the rescues are 200 rescues a day. And... The lifeguards are united, saving lives. But there's still intense competition between the boys. Sometimes you don't want to train, but somebody else is training and you think, oh, oh, I can't let them get the better of me, so it drags everyone into it. It's a bit of competition there. The young blokes try and push harder to, to knock the old blokes off their perch. Soon, they'll compete against each other in a gruelling run, swim and board race called the Lifeguard Challenge. There's a few little grudge matches. I think, um, although he denies it, I think Andrew Reid's kind of hoping to beat Corey Adams. I have heard that he's training very hard, and so he should be. He's got little or no athletic ability, so I think he should be training the house down. Me, I'm on an extended taper. It's been going for about eight years now. Secretly, everyone sort of says, oh, I'm taking it easy, I'm just going to go easy, I'm going to go slow, but when the race actually comes down to it, I think everyone sort of has a pretty good go. Next on Bondi Rescue. The boys show us what they're made of in the lifeguard challenge. Come on, Ram! Where's my boy? Let's see you go now, boy. Corey and Reedy go head to head. He hasn't beat me in anything ever in his life. And Tucker discovers his heart could stop beating again at any minute. <laughs> 